Hello, welcome to Ultra Running Diaries. I'm Paul Rose and this is episode two. So it's been a few weeks now since I've uh, kind of updated and started this channel, if you like. Um, and depending on your perspective, either a lot has happened or absolutely nothing has happened whatsoever. Um, training wise, um, I was kind of, when I, when I last updated this thing, it was about four weeks ago, um, I was basically doing a, a general kind of endurance training, um, beyond building a base, but it was very much focused on just going long, which is obviously a big part of training for a 100 mile race. Um, in the couple of weeks following that, <clears throat> uh, I've, I've the intensity ramped up a lot. I was doing a lot of hard interval training, hill sprints, kind of strength based, strength endurance, speed endurance type work, uh, mostly because I had a 20 mile race in Scotland on the horizon <clears throat> and it was kind of just aimed at bringing in the speed side of things and getting me ready for going hard for a not not a short amount of time but a short amount of time in comparison to the ultimate goal of um the 100 miler so i was feeling really really fit really strong um basically really ready to go and take on that race in scotland um which was uh it's called the mighty deer stalker um i was doing the double event so the standard event is about 15k it's about nine and a half miles the double See, doubles about 30k or about 19 miles. Um, <clears throat> that's a rat race event for people who don't know. Rat race do events globally uh, running, cycling, hiking, um, kayaking, like multi sport, everything. This is an adventure company started in the UK, they've now branched out globally and do events all over the world. So, this event was in the Scottish borders. Um, and yeah, as I say, I was feeling very fit, very ready for that race um, with about a week to go. Um, coming off of those, particularly off of those two weeks of higher intensity work, I was feeling tired. My, my legs were starting to, to go. I was ready for a little bit of a wind down, a bit of a break. So... I went into quite a short taper cycle. It was only really a week tapering. When I'm doing big races, I'll normally do two. Um, so I've got a 50 miler at the end of May. I'll definitely do two weeks tapering before that. Before the 100, I may even do do more than two. Um, well, they're probably not, but we'll see come July. Uh, so yeah, as I say, legs were feeling tired. They were ready to taper and to have a break. And as, as I was going through the taper, um, things were feeling good um, or feeling better they weren't feeling good but they were certainly improving and day by day I was doing recovery runs and easy runs and it felt like things were loosening up like weight was being removed from my legs uh, and recovery was very much on the way in the lead up to uh, that race at the weekend so that race was due to take place on the Saturday and then we got to, I think it was the Wednesday, and cancelled. Just like that, the race is off. Um, reasons cited were basically that heavy snow was forecast and it was going to disrupt the um, setup of the race and stop them from, from being able to get it um, ready to, to go ahead in time. I've run that race in snow before. Um, they've had heavy snow in the build up to that race before. It seemed like a very rash decision. It ultimately turned out to be the wrong decision when the snow didn't come, certainly not to any kind of disruptive level. Um, and what seems just mental about the whole thing is it's been rescheduled to December when it's December in Scotland, it's, it's going to snow. I don't know why they think that's a better option than 
March, but that's on them. Um, I won't be going in December. Um, because it was the Wednesday and we were tra <coughs> traveling on the Thursday evening, um, it was too late to, to cancel things, couldn't get refunds on accommodation or anything like that. So made the decision still to go to Edinburgh and stay there and to get some running in uh, whilst, whilst we were there. So as I've already said, I was already in a taper cycle at this point. I'd already started winding things down. Um, so I kind of had to make the decision between just say, okay, race is off, let's just get back into full training or keep tapering or do something in between. Um, I decided there was no point in doing a full taper for a race that wasn't going to happen, especially as going to Scotland to do a run myself, I wasn't going to get the distance or intensity that I was going to get in the race because I'd have to figure out a route myself um, and probably follow it on a map. Um, so it wouldn't just be a simple case of follow markers and follow marshals around a, a pre-planned uh, racing route. And also without the, the competition there, intensity is always going to drop down a little bit. So I decided for the kind of in-between option, I, I kept things easy just to, because what my legs needed some recovery, as I already said, they were feeling very tired. Um, and then we traveled on the Thursday, as I said, and Saturday um, went and did a kind of 10 mile loop from where we were staying in Leith up to and around Arthur's Seat, which is in Hollywood Park and, and back down to where we were staying. That was all the running I got in that weekend. So I think I, I ran home up until the Thursday, Thursday was the last one. Friday, didn't do anything, a bit of walking once we got out of the car, that was about it. Ran on Saturday morning, Sunday nothing, Monday car all day coming back, and then went to pick things up again on the Tuesday. So come the Tuesday, this was last week now, um, I was exhausted. The drive home on the Monday was shit and long and just draining. Uh, and it was a long weekend anyway, it turned into, it wasn't a running based weekend in the end, but it turned into quite a touristy weekend, we did a lot, there were a few late nights and not sleeping all that well, being in a, an unfamiliar bed and having a few drinks and that kind of stuff. So come Tuesday I was exhausted and kind of carried through Wednesday and there was kind of tiredness there for most of last week, so Tuesday, Wednesday were just very short easy runs <clears throat> and started to pick things up towards the end of the week but ultimately what has happened is my mileage the last the last two weeks i can't remember exactly what mileage i've done but they've been the two lowest mileage weeks i've done this year um so things are really kind of dropped off now two weeks isn't really enough to have a an adverse effect on the long-term progression towards the goal of, of the Lakeland 100, um, but much longer is. So this week I'm kind of back on plan and trying to build things up again. I was meant to be running the Ashridge Boundary um, race this weekend, um, but other things have come up and I'm not going to be able to do that now so I'm going to try and going to try and fit that in as a solo run at some point this week um so yeah the last few weeks have been a bit all over the place um not really not not ideal not getting what I wanted to get in but that's just kind of how it goes sometimes when you're setting long-term goals there are times where life's going to be a bit all over the place or work's going to be a bit all over the place, whatever it may be, and it's going to disrupt things. And you just kind of have to do the, the most that you can with it, which is what I'm trying to do. Um, the couple of weeks where the mileage has been down have definitely helped in terms of recovery. Um, now, I went out yesterday, um, did a 
a kind of easy run with some hill sprints sandwiched in the middle. The legs felt really fresh. Uh, the same I did about it was about eight miles I did on Saturday um, with some reasonable hills chucked in. They felt pretty fresh then. Um, so I'm hoping as this week progresses, that's I'll be able to take advantage of that. Um, I've got at least one tough interval session to do this week and then say I want to run the Ashridge boundary route which is around about 17, 17 and a half miles I think I'll try and put in a reasonable pace on that and then next week um, again I've got some some reasonably tough interval sessions and I think a fairly tough longish run to get in towards the end of the week um, <clears throat> so fresh legs should help with that and the following week, I don't know what I'll be doing. A plan, uh, I'll be using a fresh plan by then. I need to get uh, an update from my coach, um, request that and get that through. But where will we be then? We'll be kind of going into the start of April then. So I'll be in the last seven weeks, six, seven, eight weeks before what will now be my first race of the year, which is the North Downs Way 50 miler um, on the 20th, I think, of May. Um, which, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think that'll, that'll be a good race. It'll be good to get a really long run uh, in my legs and kind of see where I am. Um, it's frustrating not to have the... I mean, the boundary run I'm not so fussed about, but certainly the deer stalker not having that is really frustrating because that that was mountainous terrain as well. It was going to be the only kind of racing I get to do on that terrain before the summer um, and doing 100 miles on it. So that felt like an important stepping stone on the, the, the training journey, um, which which now isn't going to happen, unfortunately. As I've already said today, it's just one of those things, you've got to just kind of move on and make the most of it. So um, the, the last couple of weeks that have been a bit meh, I've kind of got to just leave them in the past now, take advantage of the kind of regenerated, revitalised legs that I've got as a result of that, and push on towards that 50 miler. Um, I've always said with regards to the, the North Downs 50, I want to go under 10 hours there, which I think is very achievable. Um, yeah, it's, it's the flattest 50 miler I would have done since the first 50 miler I did. I know much more about running these ultra distances now. So um, pacing and, and eating and drinking strategies are something I'm much more confident with than I was then. Um, these kind of ultra races are definitely something that you you learn a lot from experience, a lot more from experience than you can from training or or reading or um, listening to other people's experiences. So um, there's about 1,700 metres of elevation in that, which ratio-wise is about half of what I'd get in the same distance in in the lakes is is half of what I did in the same distance um in Wendover Woods last year. And that was I ran that in about ten fifty. Um I think it's it's perfectly reasonable to think that I can knock an hour off that time um just through being flatter. Um it would depend on conditions. Um obviously it's very wet now, you would hope that a couple of months time when we get to towards the end of May it'll be a lot drier probably a bit warmer um but that's you know you adjust your eating and drinking to to cope with that um <clears throat> yeah so I think sub 10 is very doable there just got to kind of kick on now for the next six weeks or so before I go into a taper cycle for that um and that's where the the fresh legs will will help now I can push on I can make the most of the interval sessions I imagine um, there'll be more longer sessions coming up and more hilly stuff as well um, I haven't done any really 
big hill work yet this year. I have done done kind of hilly runs, but um, and I, they kind of dropped off as I introduced more speed and intensity. But I think they will start to come in again more. And then once you get past the um, North Downs, then there'll be a real big focus on on big hills. I have to travel a bit to kind of the lakes and stuff to get uh, practice in on the specific terrain that I'll be running on in the summer. Uh, so yeah, I think the next the next six weeks now will just be make sure that base is really solid, really focus on good endurance, but also having having the strength in my legs to kick on and and try and get um, get the speed together to to keep that kind of sub ten. I mean, to be honest, I think sub nine is potentially doable. Sub ten should be should be very doable. Just gotta um, focus now for the next, as I say, the next six weeks or so before I go into the taper for that, and then hopefully I should be able to kick on and perform well in that race. And I'm going to leave things there for now, uh, for today. If there's anything you would particularly like me to cover, um, stick a comment below and I will get onto that. I've as I say, I've as I said in the first video, I've had questions and stuff about specific things and I'm going to try and cover them at relevant times in um, the future. Um, but yeah, for now, um, I will try and get another one out in a week or so. So thanks for tuning in and uh, hit like, hit share, subscribe, all that jazz. And I will speak to you next time.